In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men, women, and children. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 15. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. 
Why is my pain increasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The English Standard Version translates Romans chapter 12, verse 12 as follows. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. A more literal translation of the Greek text could read, in hope rejoicing, in tribulation enduring, in prayer persisting. Either way, this passage conveys a marvelous truth from God's word on which to ground and govern our lives. 
At the heart of Romans 12, 12 lies the reality of tribulation. It is a term used in the broadest possible way throughout the sacred scriptures. It embraces our difficulties, both personal and public, both self-inflicted and unjust, both physical and spiritual. If it's any sort of a problem for us, then it can legitimately be included in the biblical term tribulation. And what the Bible teaches about tribulation is that it is normal. Normal in the sense that tribulations have been around since Adam and Eve first fell into sin and have been universal ever since in all times and places among all peoples. If you're human, then tribulation will inescapably become your companion. It follows then, given that grim reality, that if we're going to make it through this life of tribulation, then we will have to learn how to endure, how to make it from one day to the next. To be sure, some days are better than others. But there come times when we just have to grit our teeth and hang on for dear life. It's the kind of life the prophet Jeremiah was dealt. In today's first lesson, we heard some of his lament. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Some days can almost seem hopeless, even for the best of us, even for someone like the prophet Jeremiah. Indeed, even God's dearly beloved son couldn't escape tribulation. Recall the prophecy of Isaiah, which declared that Jesus would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That wasn't by chance or by accident. The savior of humankind had to be such a man because that's the way it is for us humans. Our course inevitably leads us down the path which David trod, that path through the valley of the shadow of death. And that certainly was the path that Jesus followed all the way to the cross. Because Jesus shared our mortal life, he too had to endure. There was no other way. And so, not surprisingly, the author of Hebrews, when he directs our attention to Jesus, paints this picture. Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And precisely because Jesus endured the cross and was raised victoriously, he bequeathed that same destiny to all of us who have to endure. Our Lord's assurance is clear and direct. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Which brings us to hope. Hope is the secret which sustains St. Paul throughout his tumultuous ministry. In his own words, he trusted the surpassing power of God to prevail in any given moment. Grim, yet hopeful, that's the way the apostle survived. And so he testified, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, per persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Why, it's enough even to inspire one to rejoice in spite of everything which the psalmist experienced firsthand. 
I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. We, of course, have to distinguish between biblical joy and earthly happiness. The two are obviously not the same. Like the psalmist just quoted, we can be joyful even during times of affliction. For you see, rejoicing in the Bible is nearly synonymous with faith itself, believing, trusting, having the calm and confidence that the Lord is firmly and fully in control. Biblical joy is the opposite of panic and despair. This is the way the Apostle Paul summed it up for the Christians living in the first century in Rome. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Joy comes from hoping, trusting that the future rests securely in the Lord's good and gracious hands. Now, while we are in the process of enduring tribulation, being simultaneously fortified with hope, we have a powerful resource at our disposal. We can commend our days each and every day to the Lord in prayer. When we do, we have the Lord's guarantee that our prayers will be heard and will be effective. With an ear attuned to the subtleties of the Greek text, we hear Jesus giving us this promise. Keep on asking and you will receive. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and it will be opened to you. What a powerful way to endure in a fallen creation where all sorts of messy things occur. Praying our way persistently through one day to the next. In hope, rejoicing. In tribulation, enduring. In prayer, persisting. In hope, rejoicing, because in Christ Jesus, we have a God whom we can trust. In tribulation, enduring, because in Christ Jesus, we have a God whom we can trust in prayer persisting because in Christ Jesus we have a God whom we can trust. So as we begin, it is a marvelous truth from God's word on which to ground and govern our lives in hope rejoicing and tribulation enduring in prayer, persisting. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in him, Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess our most holy faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray earnestly. Remember, O Lord, thy church upon earth. Deepen her influence and extend her power for good till the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. We pray for our beloved land, for our leaders and governors, and for all who have part in public service. Make them pure in motive, wise in counsel, and strong in action doing right in the fear of thy holy name. Father in heaven, look down in mercy upon our distraught and fevered world. Forgive the mistaken ambitions, the selfish passions, and the presumptuous claims of men and women. Remove all suspicion and bitterness from among the nations and bring them to peace and conquered by the redeeming love of Christ. Have mercy, O Lord, upon those who are passing through sore trial, the poor, the sick, the anxious, the oppressed, those who are in danger from the fury of the elements or from the violence of mankind. Inspire in us and our fellow human beings the will to help our suffering brothers and sisters. Heal protect and strengthen them according to their need. Comfort those in sorrow with the comfort which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray for our own dear ones, whoever they are, wheresoever they are, that surrounded by thy love, they may be kept in health and joy and abide in safety and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. La bendición de Dios omnipotente, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con todos vosotros. Amen. And the benediction of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all, always, siempre. Amen. <laughs>